What we always know about the masters is the steps that are taken have been taken before. By Palmer. By Nicholas. By Player. By Woods. And the bridges they've crossed have been crossed before. By Ben Hogan, who left his mark in so many ways. Among them, the Masters Club, a gathering of champions. Passed down for more than 50 years. And the route the ball travels has been traveled before. His putt will break from his right to his left. Slow now. But this is, that's one of the greatest putts I've ever seen. And every year is brand new. And every year is a celebration. 50 years ago, Ben Hogan played the game as well as it could be played and set a standard we still measure against and left his name on this bridge and this trophy. This year, 93 golfers will walk again in Hogan's footsteps and one of them will find his own path and become the newest Masters champion. I really would like to win this week. I think it would be huge to win to win three Masters. No one's ever done it before. If you're ever in that position, you want to take advantage of it because it doesn't happen all the time. Everybody's going to play the golf course. And if I, with my talent, play the golf course the way I should play it, um, I should be there Sunday afternoon. It's nice to be back on the list. It's nice to be, everybody else considered me a favorite, but also that I consider myself one of the favorites, I think is even more important. I think that this one would be the best opportunity for me to win a major. If I just play my game, I'll have a chance or be in contention on the weekend. On Monday of Masters Week, the course is closed due to heavy rains. On Tuesday, the players are back, but the rain is too. Though it lets up enough on Wednesday for the annual par three contest to get underway. Tiger Woods is going to play with 1968 Masters winner Bob Golby. Tiger's going to play with us. Which one of you people want to bet on me? Happy birthday, two-time Masters winner Seve Ballesteros. While Arnie, Gary, and Jack are the day's featured threesome, and they put on quite a show at the ninth hole. Player first. See if you can get closer than that, Jack. from a ball mark. But not quite inside players. Two birdies. Can Arnold make it three? Yes, he can. Davis loved the third at the second hole. The day's only ace. As the rain returns, Padraig Harrington putts for his sixth birdie in the nine-hole contest and shares first place.
with David Toms, who needed the squeegee crew to clear a path for his final putt. The rain prevented a playoff. For the first time in 64 years, the opening round of the Masters is canceled. On Friday, lights are brought to the range for the early starters who will have to practice before sunrise. The tournament will begin at 730 with threesomes going off the first and tenth tees and a goal of playing 36 holes in one day. However, one man is missing. Sam Snead died one month after the 2002 Masters. He won the tournament three times and had served as honorary starter since 1984. His final swing, a swing that was forever his trademark, began last year's tournament. There will be no honorary starter this year. Four, please, Sandy Lowell, now driving. The tournament begins. Tiger Woods, trying for an unprecedented third Masters in a row, is in trouble on his opening hole. His fourth stroke. His fifth. And though he saves bogey, he makes no birdies on the round. 76, his worst ever opening score. He is in a group with U.S. amateur champion Ricky Barnes. Seven, he leads Tiger by five. He's a 22 year old senior at the University of Arizona. And he's now tied for second place and clearly enjoying playing with the defending champion. He made me feel comfortable right off the first tee. Um, I hit a quick, quick left ball off the first tee and, you know, I said, enjoy yourself, relax, and, you know, the day will be okay. And, you know, ever since that, we've had a good time. I've really enjoyed it. I feel pretty good right now. I just need to get, get into a rhythm. I need to make uh, make some putts get going, and uh, you know, the fatigue factor. I, we're not playing 36. We're not playing all of them, so we'll be fine. Darren Clark starting on the second nine. Birdies 13, 14, and has this for Eagle at 15. On a day of high scores, he's making the course look easy. He's the first round leader, but there's a lot more golf to play today. Played this well. Mm -hmm. I have 18 more to play. Mm -hmm. Is that an advantage for you? Just building the momentum and do it again? As peak physical conditioning as condition as I am in, I'm not quite so sure. Thank you. Fair. Great round, sir. Sergio Garcia is struggling on the PGA Tour this year. <laughs> but not on his first nine holes in this Masters. The young Spaniard ties Ricky Barnes for second place. It is a great day for amateurs. Ryan Moore, the U.S. Public Links champion, is playing his first Masters. A birdie at six helps him to an opening round 73 and a tie for 12th place. Darren Clark leads by three over the amateur Barnes and Garcia. Canada's Mike Weir made one bogey, and it came at the 18th hole. 
Three amateurs are in the top 12, including U.S. amateur runner-up Hunter Mayhem, tied with Phil Mickelson, who had the best score of all the pre-tournament favorites. Davis Love III and Ernie Els both scored 40 on Augusta's first nine. How do you get a golf course ready for the world's best after a week long rain? With a team of more than 100. Under the direction of club member John Murray. Senior director of golf course and grounds Marsh Benson. And Superintendent Brad Owen, who starts each day of tournament week with a pre-dawn meeting so that he can get equipment and people out working while it's still dark. Under these conditions, there's not a minute to spare. Wendy, double-double. Brett, double-double. Phil, double-triple. In what may be the soggiest week in tournament history, not only are the greens hand cut, but the fairways too. So wet that heavy machinery can't be used. And the secret of the week applies to golfers and greenskeepers alike. Be patient. Be patient. Good advice for everyone on a long day of golf. With an afternoon leaderboard, which does not include the name Tiger Woods, though he's trying to change that. And birdies three of his first seven holes in the afternoon round. Phil Mickelson, who's done just about everything in golf except win a major title. In trouble at the start of round two. And now birdies four of the first five holes. First round leader Darren Clark is getting tired. and loses two strokes to par in the 10 holes he'll play before darkness sets in. The other left-hander, Mike Weir, is making a move. Starting on the second nine in the afternoon, he birdies 13, 14, and 15. Adds another birdie at two, and at the end of the day, lines up his approach to the short par four third. Oh. <laughs> Mike Weir is six under par and leads the tournament. The longest day is over. Not soon enough for some. Jack Nicholas in his 43rd Masters. A day filled with optimism for others. A time to think about what lies ahead. A time to enjoy Arnold Palmer in his 49th consecutive Masters. Round two resumes Saturday morning. In a tournament full of surprises, an amateur stands alone in fourth place, while the lead is held by a lefty whose strength is not power, but course management. My game's been very solid this year, and, um, you know, the, I've always felt like the next step for me is to try to contend in, uh, in major championships, and, um, you know, so far I'm doing it. We'll, we'll see if I can do it all week. I hope I can. Saturday morning. The air is cold. The ground is wet. A fleet of vans delivers players to where they left off last night in the second round. Phil Mickelson does not want to start the day with this shot. One of the most precise and demanding at the Augusta National.
but he saves bogey and scores 70 in the second round. Darren Clark also faces a testing shot. And scores 10 strokes higher in round two. Ernie Els is making a dramatic move from seven over in the first round. He now makes his fourth birdie of round two. Pars 13 and 15 despite hitting in the water on both holes and can move into the top 10 with one more birdie this morning. He gets it at 16. A 13 stroke turnaround between rounds one and two. For the leader, trouble at the seventh. But this length putt has been no trouble so far. My putter's been hot. Uh, I'm really uh, making a lot of key uh, par putts, and um, you know it was evident this morning. I made uh, you know a nice six footer on the, my very first hole, number four, and made another one on uh, six, and then I made a nice birdie putt on eight from about uh, eight feet. So I'm rolling the putter well. Uh, I was a little bit indifferent with my swing the first six holes this morning, so I was I was glad to get it in at six. But um, you know yesterday the key was I was driving it great uh, all the way around. I just played really well yesterday. It's been an unforgettable tournament for the amateurs. Ryan Moore played with Arnold Palmer. He played very well. He had a couple of uh, times when it jumped the track, but uh, generally he was good, and he'll be good the next two days. He, he, I think he's in a good position to play well. Ryan, I can't think of anything more exciting, but also more intimidating than playing your first Masters with, oh, by the way, Arnold Palmer. Oh, yeah. What was that like? Oh, it was it was great. It was fun. You know, the galleries uh, were all around uh, supporting him uh, every hole, and uh, I, I just really enjoyed it. It was a pleasure. Hunter Mahan played with Jack Nicklaus. This young man, this young man played very well. He drives the ball beautifully, and uh, you know he's got a doesn't have any uh, hitches or flaws in his swing. He does what he wants to do. Uh, makes up his mind what he's what, what, what which way to play his shot. And he goes ahead and plays it. Uh, doesn't waste time doing it. Um, you know, he's, a, he's, he's already a very good player, but he's going to be a lot better, that's for sure. Hunter, your very first Masters, and you played two rounds with Jack Nicklaus. Right. What was that like? Um, you know, I was just trying to get out of his way today. I just didn't want to do anything wrong. <laughs> I, I, don't want I was getting stupid. out of your way, yeah. my friend. <laughs> I just didn't, I just tried to play my game and not really worry about it too much because he's going to go out and play as hard as he can. And, and just try to learn as much as I can today, and it was, it was a lot of fun. But the spotlight has been on the amateur playing with and outplaying Tiger Woods. Yeah! Ricky Barnes finishes 36 holes of the Masters tied for third place. I'm out here to compete. Uh, I'm not out here, you know, to get second, you know, or just make the cut, you know, set up for less. Now we're in the weekend, so uh, now it's time to go give him what we got. Tiger is in trouble, finishing his round on the first nine. And with a double bogey at four, he's only one stroke inside the cut line, chipping on the sixth green. And now he's off the green for a bogey that puts him right on the cut line. He must par the ninth hole to play the weekend, which means getting up and down from the bunker. That left to stay in the tournament. The putt was inside left, and I just stay steady and release the blade. We're still in the ball game. Anything can happen. Only four players are under par, and Mike Weir has a four-stroke lead. Two former winners have moved into contention. Jose Maria Olafabel and Vijay Singh both even par. 
only nine players at par or better. Amateur Hunter Mahan at one over is tied with Ernie Els and Jeff Maggart. The cut comes at plus five, and three amateurs make it. Fred Couples has never missed a cut at Augusta, and now has the longest active streak at 19. Bernhard Longer's streak, also 19, comes to an end this year. On Saturday afternoon, a sleeping Tiger wakes up. The field goes off two tees, so Tiger, 11 strokes back, starts on the second nine. Everyone on the course not only heard the roar, but knew who it was for. Ernie Els made some noise of his own. And then birdied eight to get into red numbers. Phil Mickelson was paired today with Ricky Barnes and they had a bit of a long drive contest at the second hole. Yes, Phil, that's your ball, the amateur seemed to say. And this one's mine. Oh, maybe 20 yards ahead. The leader, Mike Weir, got off to a solid start at number one. But Darren Clark found trouble early. I know. Oh, got lucky. He didn't. Clark found water at two and again at 13 where he made quadruple bogey nine his master's chances gone. The leader at seven. Opened a five stroke lead on the field. Mickelson, three bogeys in this round. But three birdies, two, and he's six back. Ricky Barnes is tied for second place. And stays there, five strokes back. Tiger, after birdies at 13 and 15, has a long eagle chance at the par five second. Come on, ball. Get up. Get up. He makes birdie and is one over. Only one man, Mike Weir, has pulled clear of the field, meaning that if he should falter, this could be the most wide open Masters ever, with Mickelson among a handful of players, even par, and Tiger just one behind. Jeff Maggard has the only double eagle in the history of the 13th hole. Today his putter is the best club in his bag. For birdie at 14. Into second place. The leader made bogey at nine and is in trouble at 11. Where he makes bogey again, the lead suddenly down to three. David Toms quietly moving up the leaderboard. Makes birdie and is tied for third place. And then Saturday gets very loud. Tiger at six. Another shot heard round the course. And he's back to even par, just five strokes behind. 
Maggard at 16. Right at the flag. 2000 Masters winner VJ Singh at 15, chipping for birdie. Tied for second, three behind Weir. Maggart to cut the lead to two. Ball below his feet, the leader at 13. Bogies, the lead down to one. Tiger at seven. for the first time in the tournament and only three strokes from the lead. Maggard at 17. Can't miss, co-leader. At 18. Five birdies in his final six holes. 21 putts for the round. His name stands alone at the top of the leaderboard. Tiger for the best round of the tournament, a 65. Still, he shows why they call the third round moving day. He jumps 38 places into a tie for fifth, just four strokes behind Jeff Maggard. I'm right where I need to be. Uh, I can see the leaders. And tomorrow, I need to get up the same start as I did today and keep it going. Playing three rounds in two days, Mike Weir is tired. It shows in his iron play, and a bogey from there drops him two strokes out of the lead. It's been a quiet afternoon for Phil Mickelson, bunkered here at 18 and disappointed in the result. He has this putt to stay one under par for the tournament. The second nine on Saturday changed the face of this Masters and set up the potential for a shootout on Sunday. Jeff Maggard has never led after three rounds of a major. Mike Weir was there once before, and the top-ranked golfers in the world are chasing them. I've been out here long enough to know that there's a lot of golf to be played, uh, a lot of emotions to, to be felt over the next 24 hours. And, uh, you know, you, you don't win golf tournaments on Saturday afternoon. You win them on Sunday afternoons, and I'm, I'm just trying to stay patient, keep working on some of the things I've been working on. And, uh, if I play well tomorrow, I've got an excellent chance to win the tournament. Obviously, I'm not real happy, but at, at the same time, I still have a chance to win tomorrow. And that's the way I have to look at it. Today, uh, hopefully, was my bad round. And, um, you know, I was just uh, a little off with my arm play and uh, put myself in some tough spots putting out there. And that's, uh, that's Augusta National. And, um, you know, hopefully tomorrow, uh, some of those things will go my way. I, I know how to win a major championship, and I think that's, that's the assurance that, uh, that really means a lot. Lynn Matisse had one of four rounds in the 60s to get to even par. Ernie L scored 38 on the second nine. Ricky Barnes 40, including bogeys on the last two holes. And now he's tied for low amateur with Hunter Mayhem. The final round is played in the best weather of the week. Dry, warm, and little wind. Hey guys. Hey, Good morning, Phil. How you doing? Bones, I'll uh, meet you on the putting green. Okay. In yeah. about, uh, you know, when you get there, 10 minutes. Throw balls so. in there. Among the arrivals, Jonathan Bird, who at even par has the best score of all those playing in their first Masters. Oh, yeah. How are you doing today? Oh. 
the Blumkan Boer. Gary Player with words of encouragement to fellow South African Ernie Els. All eyes on Tiger at the first tee. Phil Mickelson at two drove in the hazard. Now hits a driver for his third. Off the pine straw and fades the shot to the front of the green. From there, he'll be happy to two putt for par. And that is the stroke of the tournament. Worth one more look. An incredible birdie. In the competition for low amateur, Ricky Barnes takes an early lead. But Hunter Mahan stays close. Barnes for an important par with his mom Kathy lending her encouragement. Get one more roll. Yeah. Yeah. The third hole at the Augusta National is not usually a turning point. Flowering Peach is only 350 yards, and in fact, it's shorter this final round. The tee and flag move forward, perhaps tempting a few golfers into driving the tricky heart-shaped green. Lynn Matisse is playing his second Masters. Nothing odd about that. It's just that his first was 15 years ago when he was a college amateur. It's taken him this long to get back to his dream, and suddenly he's among the leaders. Tiger is tempted. Driver at number three. But it's a mistake. It leaves him with a left-handed shot back to the fairway. From where he has almost no green to work with. And plays a fourth stroke, which still comes up short. On the short par four, he's on the green and five. Makes double bogey and never gets back into contention. An even worse disaster at three happens to the leader, Jeff Maggard. The ball hits the lip of the bunker and then hits him. That's a two-stroke penalty and leaves him this putt for a triple bogey seven. In the press building, the writers sympathize. Ooh, I hate this game. That's cruel. Cruel and unusual punishment, man. Lynn Matisse is at the par 5 eight, two strokes behind the new leader, Mike Weir. I was looking at six and the make four. But that's what you need, you know? I mean, everybody will tell you when they win, you know? You need the good bounces, you need the, the things to go in, and you need some lucky breaks. So I just kind of chalked it up as a lucky break and kept going. Weir birdied the second hole to get to four under par.
now he takes a two stroke lead. Matisse at 10 the same putt Ben Crenshaw had in the final round of 1984. Four under on his round and only one from the lead. I look to keep improving and continuing to move up the ladder and compete more. That was one of my goals a few years ago to, to be a competitor in the majors. And this day proved to me that, that I can do some great stuff. As the field heads to the final nine, Weir holds a one-stroke lead over Matisse, while Jeff Maggard has fought back from his triple bogey, and Singh and Mickelson remain strong contenders. Matisse is not a power golfer, though length counts on this hole. That was the best drive I hit all week on that hole to set me up to go for the green. All week I've been practicing the four wood off a of right to left lie. You know, I've been practicing it, waiting to hit it. And when I finally had it, I said, this is what I've been practicing all this time for, and I executed it. The 2000 Masters winner has birdied the 10th hole and is only two behind Weir. And with a birdie here at 11, he ties Matisse at four under. Jeff Maggart won't give up. The birdie at 10 ties him for second place. Matisse to take the lead. He has become the crowd favorite, even if few knew his name before today. He's just a guy who keeps trying to get better, who played the tour 10 years before winning his first event last season and then won twice, and now is living every golfer's dream. Mickelson needing some magic of his own. Settles for birdie and is three strokes back. Sing after a wonderful shot from the back bunker at 12. Makes a painful bogey. And then pulls his drive on 13, leaving his own left handed shot and another bogey that derails his master's chances. Maggard has drawn a terrible lie on the downslope of the back bunker at 12. The ball comes out low, fast, and wet, and leads to a quintuple bogey eight from which there is no recovery. Ricky Barnes adds low amateur at the Masters to his golf resume, joining the likes of Jack Nicklaus and Tiger Woods. Matisse going for the green at the par 5 15th. Started it right at it, but he's nudging a little over. It's a good solid shot. Won't quite hold, but that's in good shape. Mike Weir faces yet another testing par saver. A brilliant two putt. For Mike Weir, remains one back to Lenny Matisse. From just off the back edge, gently left to right all the way to the hole. And that one was right on line. Matisse with that left for birdie as Weir walks what may be the last quiet place on this golf course, the Byron Nelson Bridge on the 13th hole. And he leads by two. Three holes to play. 
But Mike Weir still has two par fives left. Well, he overcut it and he has put it back. It's on a down slope. This is going to be a touchy little chip shot for Mike Weir. This could be terrific. I'd say it is. This to get to four. Beautiful. He's still there, but running out of holes. Len Matisse to go to eight under. Now a three stroke lead with Weir over a difficult birdie putt at 13. We really need to get this thing in here. I really kind of really focused on that putt. Just went right in the middle, and that was a big putt right there. I knew that. I knew I need to get that one in. Weir two back, and Matisse has missed the green with his approach to 17. <laughs> After the par save, one of the hardest driving holes anywhere in golf. Faded into the pine straw and blocked from the green. We're over another crucial putt for par. So solid. Matisse chips out of the trees to here. And puts his third over the green. I gave it my all today, and what I mean by that is that I didn't get out of focus. You know, I was right there. My caddy and I, we were focused on each shot, and I did a great job of that, of focusing on each shot, playing each hole, and just looking and hitting. Downhill for par. And can't believe that it comes up six feet short. Just a little over 90 yards. Trying to pick his spot out. Just right of the flag, maybe 15 or 20 feet short, one bounce, skid to halt. Struck it nicely. One last bridge, walking in the footsteps of Sarazen, on the hole where Tiger made the decisive birdie in last year's Masters. Now Matisse, how many times today has he faced the most important stroke of his career? Here it is again. Get in the hole. Lynn Matisse scores 65 on Sunday. The best final round by a Masters contender since Nick Faldo 65 back in 1989. For the moment, he leads by one. But on the scoreboard at 15, that bogey has not yet been posted. This to time Matisse. Weir doesn't know that. Yes. Three to 
play and we have a tie. In the background, the scoreboard is about to change. And that second roar tells Weir that this tournament is entirely in his hands. Mickelson for birdie at 18. For the first time in his 11 Masters, he breaks 70 on Sunday, but it's still not enough. And for the third year in a row, he finishes third. Mike Weir can take the lead at 16. He has a short but side hill birdie putt, difficult to be aggressive with. And he makes par. Lynn Matisse is taken to the Jones cabin. I knew that it was a very good chance for a playoff. Three men have had the chance to win three straight Masters. Jack Nicklaus missed the cut. Nick Faldo tied for 12th. And Tiger Woods tied for 15th. Mike Weir with a second chance to take the lead. Thought he had it. And instead faced another tough par save. Lynn Matisse was getting ready for a playoff. We're at 18, 195 yards, four iron. His shot almost reaches the top level of the green, but rolls back 40 feet from the hole. He can end his Masters at 72 holes with either a birdie or a three putt. Matisse left a six footer above the hole. Weir has the same from below. Wouldn't wish that last putt on 18 on anybody. That's uh, as nerve wracking as, as it gets. Go in! For only the fourth time in Masters history, a golfer played a bogey free final round. And for the first time in 13 years, there would be a sudden death playoff. But after the high drama of the afternoon, the playoff ended early. Off a hook lie, Lynn Matisse put his approach to the 10th hole behind a tree. And had this putt for par. It was much faster than he thought and rolled off the green from where he missed again. And so Mike Weir, who had put his approach safely on the green and then putted past the hole, now had two putts for the victory. The first left-hander, the first Canadian, but more important, the 67th Masters champion. This was not a day of defeat for the man who placed second in just his second Masters. In 1988, I was a junior in college, and I can tell you every shot I hit, I can tell you what bedroom I stayed at at the crow's nest and what I ate every night. I never got any sleep. I was so nervous as a college player playing as an amateur. This is my second Masters, and it was very, very special. And it's a privilege to play here. And it's a beautiful place.
For Mike Weir, the celebrating had just begun. A hug from his wife. And then the Green Jacket presentation. Good afternoon. I'm Hootie Johnson, chairman of Augusta National Golf Club. The first green jacket was given to Sam Snead in 1949. The first award today is to the low amateur, who for two days had green jacket dreams of his own. And then last year's champion welcomed the newest member to the Masters Club. I'd like to thank all the fans back in Canada. They've been very supportive of me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, hopefully some uh, young kid back in Canada is watching today and will be inspired to, uh, to be here wearing a green jacket someday himself. And uh, thanks, thanks once again to everybody. Um, it's, been, it's been an unbelievable week for me and something I always remember. And it's a beautiful night tonight. And uh, let's all enjoy it. Thank you very much. 50 years after Ben Hogan's magnificent final win in the Masters, Mike Weir walked in those footsteps and still blazed his own trail and added to the legend that is the Masters.